Hey, online family, my name is Vince, and I get to give strategic direction and creative insight for our online community. I'm so glad you're joining us today as we begin a new series called Empowered, based on the work of the Holy Spirit and the book of Acts. I'm here with my online family, and we're going to be talking about the promise that Jesus says in Acts 1-8 about how the Holy Spirit's going to come and give us power to be witnesses of what Jesus has done. And so I want to hear in our modern day context, what does it mean for us to be witnesses of Jesus and our spheres of influence. Talk about uh, modern. I, I love social media, especially Instagram. Yes, you do. <laughs> I love Instagram. I love to share what I'm doing, what I'm eating, what I'm not eating, what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, and you're really good at it. I'll say yeah, that. Thank you're really you. Good at it. Thank you. I try my best. Uh, best stories ever. Uh, and I, I that's the the influence that that I have, mm -hmm. and especially with women, and it's my favorite. To just be able to say, hey, um, Pastor Esley is cool too, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and it's not only that, but Jesus is cool too. Yeah, and it's, yeah. and yeah. it's normal That's and good. transparent. And when mm -hmm. I'm not in a good mood, I say it, you know? And, and mm. when I'm not in a good mood or something's not going okay in my life, I, I, I share it. So that's that's kind of what I, I use mostly. Cool. I think for me, it, it, I think back to what inspired me before I knew Jesus was my aunt's struggle or my aunt's battle, which she eventually lost to stage four lung cancer, mm -hmm. she had this piece about her that surpassed literally all understanding. I was like, wow. what? Why are you not freaking out right now? <laughs> You're not going to see your grandchildren, you know? And so that is eventually what made me open to even come into church. And so mm -hmm. now I think about that a lot when I'm around friends, especially those that may not be believers, um, to show them what it looks like to not... I get to have that peace that surpasses all understanding, right? And not to say that I have the answers to the situation, but that I know who I belong to. And that I know, like what we were saying, you know, before was that he's with me, right? And um, yeah. in a world right now where we're very much pushed to know the answers and to be solution oriented and to look perfect, look polished, I think mm -hmm. there is a burden that gets released from people that makes them kind of want to look your direction when they see this piece about you, regardless of the circumstance. Yeah, that's really good. Well, family, we don't want anyone to experience church alone. So as you're watching this message, send it to someone that you think is going to be impacted by it. Or better yet, next week, invite someone over to your place so that they can experience the love of community together. Stay tuned, and we'll see you after the message. His presence, there is healing, there is peace. So if you receive that today, why don't you lift your hands up and say, Jesus, I receive it because I am your help today. Oh, we receive your presence, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Sing this out with me. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea. Our God, he holds the victory. Let's sing this. There is joy in the house of the Lord.
shut Jesus we thank you God Christ is my firm foundation the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus cause he's never let me down he's faithful through generations so why would he fail now he won't do you believe that with me today he won't You got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength. Cause I built my life on Jesus. He's never. which is Jesus Christ.
fail me. You know what? You have to open your eyes right now. Not in the, I mean spiritually, open your eyes and see where you're standing. Tell him, Jesus, I'm sorry if I've been standing on sand. Because you might think that your faith is strong. You might think that you are standing on firm foundation. But when things happen, when winds start to hit our house, we know what we are made of. And if maybe you've been falling over, maybe you've been struggling to get back up, that's an indicator you need to build your life on a firm foundation, which is Jesus Christ. We need to build our lives on firm foundation because this world is gonna hit us and it's gonna hit us hard. But we know who we're holding on to. We know where our feet are planted. The winds may come and rains and storms may come. I am on firm foundation. Let's sing this one more time and believe this with me. Rain came and wind blew, but my house was built on you. I'm safe with you, I'm gonna make it through. Rain came and wind blew, but my house was built on you. I'm safe with you, I'm gonna make it through.
Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. For your family. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Green light to shine. Oh. 
windows, let us light in, open up the windows, let the light in, open up the windows, let the light in, let the light in, let the light in. You can really, really sing. Anybody? Right, right. Open up the good. No, no. Staying in my lane. Staying in my lane. Youth. It's always great to see the youth. Can we give it up for our young people? The youth. You guys are dismissed. The youth. God bless them. Whenever I see the youth, I always look at them and I say, man, I wish I was learning about Jesus when I was 11, 12, 13 years old. Well, my name is Darren. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the marriage pastor here. I'd like to welcome you to our 11 a.m. service. Thank you for being here. You guys could, you guys could be seated. Today we kick off a series called Empowered. Everybody say Empowered. Empowered. It's going to be a powerful word from our pastor for the next nine weeks. We'll be taking a walk through the book of Acts. And my encouragement to you is, most of us, we, we, you hear people or we say, Lord, would you, would you just give me a sign? Would you give me a word? Would you show me something new in my life? How many, have you ever heard anybody say that? Or have you said that, right? We say that sometimes. I'm not a prophet or anything like that. But what I am saying to you that this series, I believe, is going to be that for us. Is that we're going to be empowered through the Word of God to do amazing things. What the Lord has already set up for us. Amen? So I just want to encourage us um, in that. Uh, we have a very special video from our pastor. So I want you to draw your attention to the screens. And I want you to prepare your hearts for the Word that God has for you today. God bless you. How you doing, family? Pastor Miles here. For the next couple of months, I'm going to be speaking to you about giving every Sunday. Giving has been down recently, and in addition, the summer is a low giving season. But I'm believing that this summer, we can see an increase in giving, which translates into an increase of souls being saved. If we really want to accomplish anything in life, we have to live a life of commitment. If we want to get a job, we have to commit to showing up to work. If we want to be a successful athlete, we have to commit to disciplining our bodies, getting enough sleep, and staying on schedule with our workouts. 
And when I look around the San Marcos campus, I think about the commitment it took to get to where we are today. We had to commit our time and our resources to God in order to fulfill the vision that we felt God was calling us to do. And we had to trust that God was gonna take the little we had, the little we committed to Him, and act on it and even multiply it. And that's exactly what He did. San Marcos was the first multi-site campus of the Rock Church, and we had no idea that when we said yes to God and offered to Him the little we had, He would do more than we can ask, think, or imagine. There's a passage in Psalm 37.5 that comes to mind when I think about the concept of commitment. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will act. If we really think about it, the things that we commit our time, money, and resources to say a lot about us. They say a lot about what we value. They say a lot about who we are and what we trust. I often think about the little boy mentioned in the Bible who gave Jesus his lunch to feed a multitude of people. If you haven't heard this story since John chapter 6, essentially here's how it goes. When a large crowd of over 5,000 people came to listen to Jesus teach one day, a little boy was present in the crowd. He had packed himself a lunch of five loaves of bread and two fish. Probably his mother did it, but that's okay. But when the crowd got hungry and needed food, the boy had a choice to make. He could keep his lunch to himself, knowing that it could never possibly feed 5,000 people, or he could commit what he had to the Lord and trust the Lord to do with it what he wanted. And that's exactly what he did. The little boy committed his loaves and his fish to Jesus, placing his trust in Jesus, and in turn, the Lord turned around, committed that meal to God in prayer, and you know what happened? It fed over 5,000 people. This may not be a new story to you, but I want you to consider this. How many people's loaves and fish have come together as an offering of trust to the Lord to make the Rock Church happen? In his faithfulness, God has taken what this little boy committed to him and made it into something bigger than he can ever imagine. I think Jesus was excited about the crowd being fed. I really do. But do you know what I really think he was excited about? The commitment of the little boy. I think he was excited about the trust he displayed. As we prepare for an offering, remember that our commitment to make this offering is a symbol of our trust in Jesus' ability and willingness to multiply our offering and use it to bless those in need. If you would like to give today, text GIVE to 52525. That's a GIVE to 52525 and put yourself in the place of that little boy, seeing the need in the faces of the people your offering is gonna bless. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, thank you so much for this example of this little boy giving what little he had to bless thousands of people. I pray that as we prepare for this offering, we would see it as a seed that you are gonna blow on, you're gonna fertilize, and you're gonna grow and multiply to bless thousands of people here in San Diego and beyond. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. While the disciples of Jesus were still talking about Jesus' resurrection, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. He told them that they were his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. But for now, they were to stay in that city until they received power from the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost came, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that came to rest on each of them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God poured out his spirit on all people. Sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will see visions. Old men will dream dreams and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. God has raised Jesus to life. Jesus received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured him out on us. The crowds were told to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. They devoted themselves to teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, into prayer. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God 
and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. A great persecution had broken out against the church in Jerusalem, and they were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. But they continued preaching the word wherever they went. The Holy Spirit fell upon the Gentiles. The gospel was bearing fruit and growing throughout the world. Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire. The name of Jesus spread north, south, east, and west. The age of discovery brought Christianity to the Americas. Today, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit reaches you. Now, it's your turn. I feel empowered today. Good to see everybody and welcome to our 11 o'clock service. Everybody that's joining us online, God bless you and welcome to The Rock. Or if you're watching this later, glad that you're doing that. Hey, can we welcome all of our guests, our first timers, our first timers and the long timers. Glad you're here. Thanks for coming to church today. Couldn't think of a better place to be or a better uh, way to start your week. My name is Travis. I'm one of the pastors here at The Rock. And, and uh, let me welcome you. Um, yeah, before we get into our new series and the message today, I just want to celebrate a few things. One, yesterday was our one-day life class. And if you're new to the church or you're trying to get plugged into the life of the church, life class is a great way to do it because we tell you how we, uh, what we think, what we believe, how you can understand and know who God is. We help you get plugged into community and find a group to belong to. We also help you discover your own gifts that God has equipped you with and how you can use them to make a difference. And that usually happens over about four Sundays. Every Sunday we have life class, but every so often we do a one day where everyone takes it and everyone that goes can graduate. And so I just want to celebrate those over 100 and somethings that graduated life class and, and discovering their gifts and getting plugged into ministry. But also because it's June, uh, it, it, it's dads and grads, and so if you have graduated this year from, from high school, you got promoted, you graduated from college, you got your master's degree, would you stand up so we can celebrate you and honor you, all your hard work and your faithfulness? Come on, if you're a grad, would you stand up so we can celebrate you? Come on now. Let's go. Congratulations. Uh, last service, we had two, two people that were sitting right here, and it was a, a young lady and a, and a young guy, and they were both single because they were sitting by themselves. And I said, you know, find somebody next to you and just tell them congratulations. So he turned to her, and she turned to him, and they both looked happily surprised. They gave, hey, 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 what are you doing after graduation? That's what was going down after the fist bump. <laughs> so anyways, want to celebrate that. But we are in a new series today entitled Empowered. Someone shout Empowered. Come on, you got to say it like you believe we're being empowered today. Shout empowered. empowered. Yeah, like with power from the Holy Spirit, from the Lord on high. We're going to take nine weeks through this series. And it's really a series entitled Empowered, but it's nine weeks through the book of Acts. Nine weeks through the book of Acts. And I'll be up here most of the time, but you'll see some other faces here. And I want to give you a little Bible history or some historical background. I think that helps set the page. So if you let me be a little teachy for a little bit before we get into God's word and some stories, I'll give you some historical background. Um, the book of Acts is the fifth book of the Bible. Matthew, Mark, excuse me, New Testament. Fifth book in the New Testament, second half of the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. It's written Acts in your Bible, but really it's the Acts of the apostles or the actions of the apostles or say it this way, it's the deeds of those first early disciples. And the guy who wrote it was a guy named Luke, he was a doctor. Luke also wrote the gospel according to Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, the story of Jesus, John, and he writes the book of Acts. And so Acts is really part two of Luke. Where Luke ends with uh, the resurrection of Jesus on Easter is where Acts begins with the uh, um, ascension of, of Jesus into heaven and the descending power of the Holy Spirit. And it begins to birth the church in something that is known as Pentecost. Yeah, amen. We got, we got a couple amens, but some of you, I know you're new and you're like, all right, is it snakes in a plane already? Because I just got here. Like, what are we talking about Pentecost? What is this? Today in the church calendar, if you looked at it, this is Pentecost Sunday. Now, don't be weirded out by it. Lean into Pentecost because Penta 
Kosti. Penta, five. Kosti in Greek to the 10th power. So one of my graduates, what's five times 10? 50, come on now. Come on, right? This ain't a trick question. Five to the 10th power, five times 10 is 50. Pentecost Sunday is exactly 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus. So if you look at your calendar and go, when was Easter? Okay, it was here. Boom, 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 boom. 50 days is today. It is Pentecost Sunday. It is the day that the Holy Spirit came and filled the room with those first disciples and filled them with power to go be a witness. So that's, became, that's become the, the, the birth of the first church. It becomes the central theme for the book of Acts that a Holy Spirit-empowered church begins to spread the gospel throughout the world. So would you bow your heads and pray with me? We got a little back story to Acts, and then I want to pray for you that the Holy Spirit would do what only he can do, fill us with power today as we dive into the word. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your life. Thank you for your sacrifice on the cross and all you've done for us. And we are blessed that you went to heaven so that you could send us the gift from your Father, the Holy Spirit. And so we believe in him. We receive his power today. Pray that he would speak to us and speak through me in Jesus. Then we pray. Someone shout amen and amen. Amen. Um, this past Monday was Memorial Day. And um, uh, my brother-in-law posted a video of him doing a workout called the Murph. Anybody know the Murph? Right, it's named after a Navy SEAL that served our country and, and, and gave his life while he was doing that. Lost his life serving our country, Michael Murphy. And so a lot of people do this Memorial Day workout to remember him, Michael Murphy. And the workout that my brother-in-law posted, by the way, he's 6'3", kind of kind of jacked, and a uh, former linebacker at University of Utah, the Utes, and he, he did it with a 20-pound weight vest on him, and he posted the picture, like, come on, brother, I already knew you were fit, like, you don't got to rub it in. <laughs> but the Murph is basically, you run a mile, then you do about 100 pull-ups, then you do 200 push-ups, and then 100 squats, and then you do another mile. And I'm like, I could do that. I'm not going to post about it, just in case I don't, but I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to give it a try. I won't wear a weight vest, but I'm going to go for it. And we have a treadmill in our garage, and so uh, usually my wife uses that, Vanessa, who's sitting right there. But I said, you know what, let me go ahead and try. So I got on the treadmill, and I kind of put it to my speed, and I, I'm like, I'm, I'm doing the Murph. Let's go. It's Memorial Day. I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. So I start, I start running, not too fast, but enough. And so I'm, I'm running on the treadmill. Halfway through, I get the side, the, the side pain. You know the side cramp? Ah, you know, it's just like, ooh. Who remembers that from PE, the side cramp, right? As adults, you don't, you don't get those because you don't even run. That's why you don't get it. But when you're little in PE, it was like, ah, he's down. Oh, he's got the side cramp. That's what's going on. Halfway through, the side cramp hit me. Oh, but you got to press through. you got to keep going, right? But for the joy set before him, got it. No, I'm just kidding. But I had to press on. I'm pressing on around three quarters of the way. I'm getting gassed. I'm getting gassed. And so I had my headphones with me. And, and, and I had some house music. I don't know if you know what that is, but anybody know what house music is? Come on, you all are, are, are in the club. You just expose all yourselves all, all here in church, just like, yeah, I know what house music is. I had it in my ears because I'm running, and, and, and it gets to the point where it's called the drop. And the drop kind of gave me a little bit of momentum. So it's going, you know, here, here, here's what it is. Drop the bass. That's the drop. That's the drop. Okay? So you're with me. You can see how this would be encouraging when you're running and you're getting tired. He just, you know, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. And I'm getting towards the end, and I'm feeling good, and I finish the mile, and I'm like, okay, all right. But I set it for a mile, and so it should slow down and stop when you're done with the workout. But I had to do one of, one of these because the treadmill kept going. And I was thinking, why is it still, why is the timer still timing, and why is the treadmill still treading? And I'm up here with my feet over the treadmill as it still goes. Here's what I realized. I had just run one lap. I was so tired. I was so tired. I had, I had the, the house thing and the drop and the da 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 Boom, boom, boom. I just did a lap. I was so gassed. I was so tired. This is a true story, by the way. I'm not making, I'm not making this up. But here's what I realized. Here's what I'm telling you the story. I wasn't close. I had really just begun the workout, and I had so much more to continue. You with me so far? Here's why I'm telling you the story. 
Because I want to answer these questions. Why did God give us the Holy Spirit at Pentecost? And why is the book of Acts, the second part in a two-part story that starred in Luke, so important? Here's why. Because what God began through Jesus, he wants to continue through you and me. Because what God began through Jesus, it was life, death, burial, and resurrection, witnessing to the world, God wants to continue through you and me. That's the story of the book of Acts. Turn with me to Acts chapter 1. If you've got your Bible with you, I'm going to be reading Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Again, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, the fifth Bible in the New Testament. And it sets up the, the story and the direction for where we're going. This is the author Luke writing and telling the story of what began in the life of Jesus. Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. In my former book, that's Luke speaking about the book of Luke. Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus, underline it, began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem. Don't leave the place that you're at. That's what he's saying. If he was here today, he'd say, Rock Church, don't leave San Diego until you get this. Don't, don't leave Jerusalem. But wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You're going to be overwhelmed with the Holy Spirit. You're going to be consumed with the power of the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Because what they thought was that they were being oppressed by Rome and Jesus came to free them from this political oppression to establish his political kingdom. But Jesus comes and establishes his spiritual heavenly kingdom. And he says in verse 7, he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority. Here's our anchor verse for the whole series. But you will receive, say it with me. Power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses. That's the point. In Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. He says, listen, don't leave this place. Wait for the gift my Father is sending. It's better that I go so that you can have the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that brought me out of the grave is the same spirit as believers lives inside of you that brings you out of whatever it is that you're suffering with. And he says the Holy Spirit's going to come on you. And you're going to have power to what? To be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. That's like saying, San Diego, you're going to be a witness to San Diego, to California, to the United States, and the ends of the earth. The title of my message, if you like titles, is Empowered to Be a Witness. Empowered to be a witness. Um, 1997, I was 13 years old. This was a good year for me. In 1997, uh, P. Diddy, uh, Sean Diddy Combs came out with No Way Out. That was his first released album. And you remember, remember with like the puffy clothes and like take that, take that, take that. You remember that puffy? With, the, with like the garbage bag music videos? No, a few of you? Okay, that was 1997. And then Tiger Woods won the Masters in 1997, his first kind of big tur tournament coming out party. But also in 1997, there was a gospel artist named Kirk Franklin. Come on. And he partnered with a gospel choir, God's Property, and released a song called Stomp. How many remember Stomp? Yeah, I remember. And I, and I, would, I would listen to Stomp. It didn't just play on the Christian radio stations, but it also played, so I could listen to it with my parents who were sitting right here. We heard it on the Christian station. But they didn't know, they were playing it on the secular station. For me, that was 102.5 Kadon. You didn't listen to that one. That was for the worldly people. Come on. But they played Kirk Franklin's stomp on all the radio stations. So I remember this song, and I wrote down some of the lyrics. He said, when I think about your goodness, it makes me want to stomp. Come on, you know the song. And he keeps going. Makes me clap my hands, make me want to dance and stomp. That's the words. But then Kirk Franklin, because here's the thing, he doesn't even sing. He just talks and makes the other people sing. That's what he does. That's his gift. That's his anointing. The dude can dance and he talks and you sing. That's what he does. He's so good. 
He's so good. But this is what he said afterwards. He goes, we're about to have a Holy Ghost party up in here. Can I get a witness? And here's what I think. Here's what I believe. I don't know this. I'm just thinking this. That Kirk Franklin, because he's a man of God, has read the scriptures and has read through Acts chapter 1 and realizes that when the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost comes and fills the room, it's so that you can be a witness to the faithfulness of God. Can I get a witness? So how do you and I witness and what does that look like? Because maybe you don't dance and maybe you don't lead choirs or clap your hands, but you just know after reading this that all believers are called to witness, how do you do it? I want to give you four ways that you and I can witness with our lives. So if you're taking notes, here's point number one. Your witness is your holy life. Your witness is your holy life. Your holy life is your set-apart life. That's all that word holy means. It means to, to, to be set apart, consecrated, for, for a special use. It's holy. It's different. It's, it's not used for the other stuff. It's what you're running from and it's what you're running towards and you need the Holy Spirit to do it. Here's what 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 says. But now you must be holy in everything you do just as God who chose you is holy. God is holy. What God began, he wants to continue through you and me. God is holy. Now he invites us to be holy. In Galatians 2.20, it says, my old identity, that's your old person. That's your old girl. That's your old man. Your old identity has been crucified with Christ and no longer lives. And now the essence of this new life is no longer mine. For the anointed one, that's Jesus, he lives his life through me. How? By the Spirit. We live in union as one. My new life is empowered by faith of the Son of God who loves me so much that he gave himself for me, dispensing his life into mine. Um, And when I was in um, youth group growing up at the church I was a part of, my youth pastor would always do these weight loss challenges for himself, and he was always trying to get people to go on it with him to hold him accountable. He's a crazy guy. I loved him, loved him to death. Um, but he, he said, hey, man, why don't you do something that, you know, we'll hold each other accountable. And I said, fine, I'll give up soda for a whole year, which I did. And, and it worked because to this day I don't drink soda, and I end up drinking water. But I remember it getting really hard when I would go with my friends to different places, and, you know, on the menu it was just all soda. And they go, hey, you know, here's the drink, here's the order, and then, Travis, what are you going to have? And I just go, I'm going to have the water, you know, because I'm not doing soda. And so there was this, I'm not doing soda. And, and in that, I also lean into water. And sooner or later, my, my friends, as we would go places, go, you know what? That They jumped in on the no soda challenge with me. And they would say, you know what? Let me get that water too. Let me get that water. And it just became this real simple thing that they just saw in my life that was real simple as a young person, but it was enough for them to take notice. And so I'm wondering, what are the things in your life today that God is saying and inviting you to run away from and inviting you to run towards? Also that empowered by the Holy Spirit, you can say no to that and I can say yes to that. I can say no to sexual temptation, but I can say yes to purity. I can say no to alcohol, but I can say yes to, you know, whatever else you would do that isn't alcohol. <laughs> Let me get the, the fruit, the fruit punch. You can say no to gossip, but instead say yes to encouraging conversation. You can say no to division. Come on, somebody. Come on, Roger. And you can say yes to unity in Jesus' name. You can say no to popping bottles and yes to reading Bibles. Come on, because... Half the room, you know all the lyrics to Drake, but don't know any scripture. <laughs> That's the truth, because you were on the way to church, just like, let it pop, watch it drop. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> it's on the way to church. On the way. But I'm leaning into a life of holiness. It's my set-apartness. It's my witness to the world. And when you do it, Rock Church, the world knows what you're about. Why would we be a witness with a holy life? Because what God began through Jesus, he wants to continue through you and me. Here's my second point. Number two, your witness is your supernatural life. Your witness is your supernatural life. If you can do it without God, it's not super. It's being done in the natural. Doesn't mean it's wrong. Doesn't mean it's sinful. It's just not super. It's being done in the natural. That's okay. But here's what John 14, 12 says. Very truly I tell you, Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And didn't Jesus do some things? Didn't he do some things? And they will do even greater things than these 
Because I am going to the Father. And in turn, we know he leaves us with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is saying, I did it because the same spirit that I'm talking about was in me. Now, I'm going to the Father. In fact, I have to go to the Father. And the only one that's here on earth with us now is the Holy Spirit. Let that sink in for a minute. Jesus is seated next to the Father. The Holy Spirit is here. And he says, by the Spirit, you can live a supernatural life. In Ephesians 3.20, the writer says, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He'll outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. His miraculous power. What kind? Miraculous power. Natural power? No. His miraculous power will constantly. On Sunday? Yes. But just Sunday? No. His miraculous power will constantly be with you, flow through you, be in you, come on you in Jesus' name. I, I, a couple of years ago, I can't even believe it's been that long, but that's how long we were living through this pandemic. I found myself coming out of Target one day, and I saw a guy that I recognized. His name is Nash, part of our church family in our south campus in Chula Vista. And I feel like during the pandemic, there were so many things that, that, were, that were impacted, but maybe relationships the most. Would you agree with that? And, and maybe the married couples experienced some of the, the, the hardest times and tension. And I'm not saying that your time wasn't more difficult, but certainly married couples went through it. And Nash was a married guy, and I see him coming, and I just say, hey, Nash, what's up, man? Haven't seen you in a while, because that's what we're living in. How have you been? And I can tell that he wasn't doing okay. And Nash was really gracious with me and began to tell me about he and his wife, Lizzie, and how things have not been great. In fact, they've been the worst they've ever been. To the point where he's been kind of living in his truck and they're trying to figure things out and they're feeling separated and even talking about things they would never imagine talking about and ending the relationship. And what was really heartbreaking is that uh, Lizzie was, was pregnant with their second child. And he was saying, I should be excited. I should be happy, but I'm not. And now I'm being just, just, I'm just torn in this tension because I feel like we're not going to make it. And as he's telling me all of the details, and I won't tell you all the details, but as he's telling me the story, I just was overwhelmed by the situation. And I, I almost felt like saying in the natural, man, this, this, is, this is terrible. This is, this is bad. This is really bad. But in the supernatural, that's not our position. And because I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. And because he is filled with the Holy Spirit, we took a moment and we said, let's pray. And we prayed and we said, God, we need a miracle. We need a miracle. Here's what we're saying. God, we need you to do what Nash and Lizzie can't do. That's what we need. We need a miracle. We need you to do what only you could do. And I didn't see Nash for the next several months because that's the life that we were living in. Until I saw them months later together. To get, well, we can give God praise for that. They were together. But they weren't just together. They were together, and their newborn son was there, and they were in, in love and reconciled. And now I found out from asking them questions about their story that they're leaders in our church in Chula Vista. They're involved in a marriage small group. And they tell other married couples that are struggling how God came through in their darkest hour, and it was miraculous. Because there was no hope in sight. Here's what I want you to know. I want you to lean in for this. Living a supernatural life is saying, God, what I could never do in 10 years on my own by your spirit in me and through me, you can do in a moment. You can do in an instant. You can do in a week, a day, a month. The timing is not important, but God can do it because it's supernatural. When it happens, God gets the glory and the world around you is put on notice. The world around you is put on notice. Your witness is your supernatural life because what God began through Jesus and his life, his death, and his resurrection power, he wants to continue through you and me. Here's my uh, third point. Write this down if you're taking notes. Your witness is your faith-filled life. Your witness is your faith-filled life. This means that no matter the season or the circumstances, you're living with hope for the future. I'll say it a different way. The faith-filled life lives with hope no matter what you're living through. 
The faith-filled life lives with hope no matter what you're living through. Cancer, I got hope. I got a life filled with faith. Lost my job, God's in control. I'm living a faith-filled life. Here's what Hebrews 11.1 1 says about faith. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. I can't see it, but I'm believing by faith God for it. That's what the spirit-filled faith says. John 16, 13 reads, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. I don't need a guide to lead me backwards. I need a, a, a guide to lead me into something new. And so the scriptures say, when the spirit of truth comes, he'll guide you into all truth. He won't speak on his own. He'll speak only what he hears. And who does he hear? The Father. And who does he agree with and speak for? Jesus and he will tell you what is yet to come. So God's word is telling us the Holy Spirit encourages you about your future. And he'll say things like, listen, I'm making all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. He'll say stuff like, I'm making a way where it feels like there is no way. That's what I'm doing. The Holy Spirit begins to guide you and lead you through this. To build your faith, the, the Holy Spirit will begin to say things like, I have a plan for you. A plan to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. Uh, I, I know we have some graduates in the house today. Uh, in 2004, I moved to San Diego because I applied to San Diego State College. It would be my junior year. And I only applied to San Diego State University. I had done two years of junior college, and I was an okay student. I had about a 3.0, and, 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 and I was applying for the uh, business program, which at the time was one of the most impacted degree programs at San Diego State. And some friends of mine, we were all applying for the last two years of our, of our college, our education. And they all applied to multiple schools because they were in the same program. I only applied for one. And I remember them giving me a hard time because they would say, Travis, listen, like, you're not like the best student in the group. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you should probably apply to multiple schools because this degree program is really, really impacted. You may not get in. And I just said, you know what? I just feel like this is what God has for me. Now, uh, taking into consideration, I had never even been to San Diego before. I had never even seen a picture of San Diego before. I didn't know what the weather was like. I didn't know if the people were good looking or bad looking. I didn't know any of that stuff. For whatever reason, I just thought San Diego. God had impressed it on my heart. And as a person of faith, I prayed about it and believed God for it. And as a, a friend of mine, they knew I was a person of faith. And they gave me a hard time until, come on somebody, you know I got accepted. They saw that little faith act, and it was little faith acts like that that led to my testimony becoming a witness to the faithfulness of God. Would you know that both friends eventually came to church with me and gave their life to Christ? That was the witness of my life in that moment. Something so small to say, I believe God for it. I believe that God is in it. I believe that God has this for me. That's just the, the faith-filled life that I have. The Holy Spirit wants to empower you, has empowered you if you're a believer. And if you're not today, you're just leaning in and going, uh, you know, this whole Pentecost, I don't, I don't know about all this, but I'm, I'm in with Jesus. I'm, you got me there. But the end of our time today, and if you begin a relationship with him, the Holy Spirit fills your life. And the same power that's in me is available to you. And he wants to empower you to be a witness. And your witness is your holy life. Your witness is your supernatural life. Your witness is your faith-filled life. Why? Because what God began through Jesus, he wants to continue through you and me. Here's the fourth point, my last point. Your witness is your sacrificial life. Your witness is your sacrificial life. Your witness is not a free three-month subscription that you can cancel at any time. It's expensive. I want to be honest with you, it's expensive. In fact, it costs Jesus everything so that you can be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Jesus lived a perfect life, sinless life, a life that you and I could never live. But he endured the cross and he thought about you and me and he thought about the stuff you're going through and he thought about the obstacles and the hurdles and the sin and the, the, the shame and he took it to the cross and he paid for it. And he rose from the grave by the power of the Spirit, goes to heaven next to the Father and says, I'm giving you this gift. It cost me everything so that you can get it, but you gotta get it. 
And for you and I, it's expensive. Because you're called to live a sacrificial life, but that becomes your witness. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2 says, Beloved friends, what should be our proper response to all of that that you just heard me say? To God's marvelous mercies. To surrender yourselves to God, to be his sacred living sacrifice. And live in holiness, experiencing all that delights his heart. For this becomes your genuine expression of worship. You want to know what it looks like to worship God? You live as a sacrificial life. Stop imitating the ideals and the opinions of culture around you. i got to say that twice because some of you came just for that. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. You should look different than everybody else. But be inwardly transformed by who? The Holy Spirit. Through a total reforming, reformation of how you think, this will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. The Holy Spirit is the one that empowers you to live sacrificially. After church, I I try my best to get to the front doors. Not every Sunday, but I'll do my best to get there, and oftentimes I'll have you know, maybe a meeting with someone who we've already agreed that we're going to get together and pray or something or talk about their life. But on most Sundays, and I'll be there today, I'll be at the front doors just to wave at you if I've never done that before or to help make this big church feel small. Because all this is great, but sometimes that's where the money is right there. Where I get to say hello to you and you tell me your name and I get to tell you my name. We shake hands or we, I give you what's up. I see you. Nice shoes. And so that we can connect a little bit. So you can know people, not going to hear your story and pray. And on one occasion, a guy came up to me and he said, Pastor, and we had never met before, but he said, God keeps pressing something on my heart. God keeps putting something on on, on my heart, a burden for this individual person. And he was talking about a new staff member that was here at this campus at this church. And he said, God keeps wanting me to ask and find out what that person needs. And so he's asking me, Travis, what do they need? And they were new to the staff and they had come to church and, and, and started working here, and it was going to be just a, a one-income household, and they had one car that was okay, and so they'd been saving up for a down payment on a car that was better than what they had. And, and, this per, and so I, I said, yeah, you know, they just however you want to bless them, pray for them. And he goes, no, 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 what do they need practically, financially? How can I help? I said, all right, here we go. Here it comes. You asked for it. They're saving up for a down payment on a car, on something better than what they have. And he goes, okay, let's do it. And I said, what, what, what are you doing? <laughs> about this let stuff, like you came to me, you know what I'm saying, like, like, like my wallet is back in the office, like, <laughs> and let's do it, and I said, what are you talking about, he goes, I want to, I want to pay for the down payment on that car, and I was like, wow, I can't believe, that's incredible, and so I got the information of the guy, and his wife was with him, and he goes to our church, he may be in the room right now, I don't want to tell you his name, but he's here in the room, potentially, or at the last service, and and so I get his information to connect him with, with, with my friend who's on our team, and, and they, they connect. And so I end up going back, and I say, hey, did you talk to him? Did you talk to him and his wife, and did they do what they said they were going to do? And he said, absolutely, a- absolutely. But not only did he want to pay for the down payment, he said, Travis, they bought me a brand new car. Rock Church, I've told this story over and over and over again about the faithfulness of God. I know my friends who are on the staff with me, they've told this story to many people. Your witness is your sacrificial life. And when you live sacrificially, God gets all the glory and the world is put on notice that he's faithful, that he's just, that he's loving, that he's good, that he comes through for his people, that what God could only do in his time and his plan, he'll do for you if you ask him to do it. The world is put on notice when you live sacrificially. And the Holy Spirit wants to empower you to live out that life. I'm going to show it to you one more, one more way, and you can begin to play, my friend, and we'll end our time together. But I want to bring it all together here. This, this week was a big week in um, the Gibson household. We had uh, some moments, and I was getting ready for the, the message today. And in my time with my kids, for whatever reason, I, I told my daughter, I said, Anaya, do you want to try to uh, learn to ride your bike without training wheels? And she said, absolutely, let's do it. And her bike, she has one, uh, but the seat was a little bit too high. And you, that, that's half the battle is, you know, if the feet don't touch, it's like, it's no good. And so we lowered the seat on my son's bike, and I took the, took the training wheels off. And I told her, I said, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it in the right position. 
and we'll adjust it for you and we'll, we'll take it slow. And go at your pace. And so she jumps on the bike, the training wheels are off and we start going. And we're cruising along and, 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 then, and, and then a few seconds later she goes, all right, let go. And I said, let go? She goes, let go, let go, let go. And so now I'm letting go. And you know, I'm, doing, I'm doing one of these, you know what I mean? Because this is my idea and if she falls, it's on me. This is my idea. But she's riding church the best ride of her life. And she's going fast and she's going in circles and she's hitting the cul-de-sac and, and just the, the wind and the hair is like two, 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 two. I mean, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Had so much joy in her spirit. And as she's riding, you know what she said? She said, Daddy, I feel like I want the whole world to see me ride my bike without training wheels. I wish the whole world could know what's going on in my life. Now the whole world couldn't see her, but the world around her could, because the closest person to her was her little brother. And I said, Levi, do you wanna do that? And he said, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but he saw her. And so we took the bike with us to my parents' house, the mom and dad right there. That afternoon, we had some dinner together, and we brought it out. I had the training wheels, and I said, Levi, what do you think about trying it now? And he said, yeah. He said, yeah, because I want what my sissy had. I want, that was, that was a good ride. I want to do that. Here's the video. Whoa. Yeah, Levi! He's all gas, no brakes. That's why, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, that's the run fast enough not to sweat run right there. I love my daughter was like, yeah, Levi. But church, can I just tell you that that moment is what the whole world is waiting for. We knew it was significant in our kids' lives. But this is what the whole world, whole world is waiting for. They're waiting for people like you and me to tell the world, look at my life. Look at this ride I'm going on. It's the best ride I've ever been on. I got so much in my soul. I got so much peace in my heart. And no matter the circumstances, I'm filled with faith. I'm living a different life. Why? Because I have the power, indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus went the whole way, not so that I can just go to heaven, but so that I can go and make a difference. So that what God began in him, God can continue through you and me. We're empowered to be a witness to the world. And it begins by saying, I'm going to live a holy life. And some of you, it's I'm going to begin to live a supernatural life because you feel like a powerless Christian. But in the moment, you're going to have a chance just to say, Holy Spirit, fill me with fresh oil. And for others, it's a faith-filled life that no matter where you're going or what storm comes or the cancer news or the job loss or, or the frustrating relationship, you just, I'm just filled with faith. I'm just believing God. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is my guide and he's been telling me things about the future, that he's got a plan for me, to prosper me and not to harm me. And for others of you, it's your sacrificial living. And when you do things that don't make sense to the rest of the world, the world is put on notice that God is real. Why don't you bow your heads, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for sending him to live for us, to die for us. We thank you that the same power that pulled him out of the grave is the same spirit and power that's available for us who believe. But there are many here in this room and many that are joining us online or watching at a different time or date and they need to begin their relationship by saying, I trust Jesus. And so if that's you with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I want you just to pray this prayer in the stillness and quiet of your heart. Just say, I admit, Lord, that I'm a sinner and that I've fallen short of your glory. But I believe that Jesus lived for me. And I believe that he died for my sin. And I believe that he conquered that sin and paid for it through the resurrection. And I confess him today as the Lord of my life, as the leader of my marriage, as the supreme authority over all things, not just one of the things that I'm about. He is the thing that I'm about. 
And now, Holy Spirit, fill me with your power. Make me brand new. And now, while our heads are still bowed and our eyes are still closed, there are many Christians in the room who you've known about Jesus, you know who God the Father is, but the Holy Spirit is someone that you put at a distance because maybe someone explained them to you with bad packaging or bad representation or you got a bad experience, but friends, if it's from God, you want all that God has to offer. And God wants to immerse you, overwhelm you with the presence of his Spirit. Do not be afraid. And so if you want his power today, He's in you already if you believe. But surrender to his power and let him take full control. Just with your hands open and a posture of receiving, put them in front of you right now. If you're driving, you've got to pull over. Let's do this together. And just say, Holy Spirit, fill my life. Baptize me with your power. I submit to you. Now, as everybody's heads are bowed and their eyes are closed in just a moment, I'm going to count to three. I just want to see your hand. If you prayed any one of those prayers so we can just bless you and encourage you, on the count of three, would you stick your hand up? One, two, three. Hands going up all across the room. Awesome. Wow, look at that. Church on fire right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. God, we bless every single person. We thank you that you have filled this church with power. We thank you that we don't have to walk out of here just thinking about the good news, but we can actually be the good news for other people. But it takes your power. It takes your spirit. Pray that we would live holy lives, supernatural lives, and do the things that you've done that we read about that don't make sense, but you did them and said that we can by your spirit in us. I pray that you would enable us to live faith-filled lives and sacrificial lives. And when we do, will the world be put on notice that we are a witness to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There is no one like you. And so in this we agree, in the matchless name of Jesus, and the whole family said amen, amen, and amen. Come on, Rock Church. Let's thank God. Would you give God praise? Well, family, I hope this message was encouraging as we're learning about the promise of the Holy Spirit and how the church was birthed through the book of Acts. And I just want to reiterate the verse, it's Acts 1, verse 8, and it reminds us that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, and in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And as I was actually looking at this passage yesterday, I felt like the Holy Spirit showed me something really simple, but it's that the Spirit of God brings both purpose and power. And power without purpose is dangerous, but purpose without power is useless. And it actually reminded me of um, the summer trips my family and I used to take. Uh, We would drive from North Carolina down to Mobile, Alabama, where my parents are from. And almost every summer, our car would break down. (laughs) And it got to the point where, as a kid, I didn't think that cars were designed to travel long distances because we would always break down, right? We had had purpose, we we had the vehicle, but we didn't have the power to make the 10, 11 hour drive. And so I wanna ask you guys, how have you seen the Spirit of God bring both power and purpose together in your own life? Bro, first of all, I can relate to that because my dad, I'll talk about my dad in a little bit, but he was always the guy going out there finding like that $2,000, $3,000 car, gonna fix it up and just pray and hope that (laughs) it lasts. And I love my dad, but we were sometimes in the same boat. Yes. On road trips, not gonna make it. Yeah. (laughs) But my dad also has actually been a lifelong worship leader and elder at our local church uh, back where I'm from. And for the longest time, he tried to like instill that in me. And like I could pick up guitar and music and whatnot, and I really enjoyed it but not like the worship aspect. Mm. Like I remember in high school, I was like, man, worship, nah. Guitar, girls, bonfire, yeah. <laughs> oh my right? gosh. So bad, so oh, bad. Wow. But uh, then Jesus got a hold of my heart. Amen. And then I discovered, <laughs> wow, like, okay, power and purpose. Like God's mm. given me the gift to be able to sing, lead worship and lead mm-hmm. um, and play guitar so I can combine these two together. And like it took off to the point where I wasn't expecting it, but I began leading in like youth group. And then when I went to college, I didn't tell anybody because I was just like discovering this gift. Right. But then by like, uh, by the time I was done with college, I was like part of, you know, at Christian universities, they have like teams that lead worship uh, for the university. So I was doing that. And I had never thought that I would get to that point. And at one point I was just like this kid 
playing at bonfires, and here I am now yeah. leading worship like 10 years later. It was kind of crazy. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, in mine too, I think in my life, um, I saw the power. I always felt like I was going, I was always pastoring my friends. Mm. Like I was always pushing mm. my friends to Jesus, but I didn't know I was a pastor. Mm. Because back in the day, growing up in the Baptist church, a woman, a pastor, is a big no-no. Mm. And, and I had always, I've been, I had been programmed to not be a pastor. So I went to school to become something that had nothing to do with being a pastor. Um, but I could see that it was the whole, the, the line of helping people and, and being part of, of um, making people's life better, which now, I, I mean, I went to school for it. I'm still paying for the student loan <laughs> <laughs> that I'm not using, but, uh, but in a way I am using, but the, to see God um, use my, my master's in human behavior to get to pastor people in a really deep way and get to know, oh, you feel shame. Oh, you mm. feel, and then be able to, to pastor people to, to it. It's, it does a power and the purpose that That's you were awesome. talking about. Mm. I'm just seeing the Holy Spirit work through, you know, discipleship, right? Like uh, seeing him kind of work. I have a Stephanie, she's our kids pastor right now at East oh. County and she used to be our one of my coaches when I was a kids pastor down in San Ysidro. And she was like terrified to even be a coach. Mm. She was like, no, I can't lead. I, just tell me what to do. I'll just go in the classroom. Not that there's anything wrong with just being in the classroom because some people are gifted in that way, but I just saw leadership in her. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, you were meant to be a coach of the service. And, and just seeing the Holy Spirit, I mean, that was over six years ago now, I think. And so seeing him just kind of continue to grow her and call her mm -hmm. into more and more leadership space to the, to the point where now she's a kid's pastor yeah. at That's really East cool. County. It's yeah. pretty amazing. amazing. Yeah. yeah, shout out to Stephanie. I saw her host yeah. a couple of weeks ago at oh, East County. So cool. so, yeah. The public speaking aspect was the most terrifying part for her. And yeah. so now she's a host over there. She did great. So good. Yeah. Well, family, maybe you're watching this today and you have no idea where to start. You're like, I don't even know where God has gifted me. I believe that he's calling me to do something. I want to invite you to take our spiritual gifts test. You can access it by going to sdrock.com slash gifts test or text gifts test to 52525. It's a simple test, take you five to 10 minutes to give you maybe an inclination of something that you've is already placed inside of you. Maybe God's called you to be a leader or a teacher. Um, there's some descriptions about what that looks like and we'd love to hear from you. So maybe you get the results, you can email it to our team and we'd love to see how we can best guide you in your journey. God bless you guys, we'll see you next week.